Hello, Pastor Ed here from Hope Lutheran Church with Daily Devotions for Wednesday, uh, August the 11th, 2021. Had a little bit of a technology hiccup, so um, this is coming to you uh, a little bit later than, than normal, so I apologize for that. Um, our reading today is from the New Testament letter of Colossians, uh, the first chapter. Uh, I want to say just a little bit about Colossians. Colossians um, uh, was written to a congregation that the Apostle Paul most likely never visited and only had kind of indirect knowledge of through uh, a missionary by the name of Epaphras. Um, it apparently was written around the same time as the letter to the Ephesians, and in both cases we're not really sure whether Paul wrote them. The evidence seems to be uh, weighing on the side that he didn't, that it was somebody, you know, maybe who uh, a follower of Paul, a disciple of Paul, um, but somebody probably pretty familiar with Paul's theology, uh, but not necessarily the same writing style. Um, and like some of the other writings, I think of Galatians in particular, uh, it was written to counter counteract the false teachings that apparently were prevalent in the early church, um, where um, there were those who were saying that to become a Christian you had to be circumcised, you had to follow all the Jewish laws and so forth. And Paul, of course, um, we know was definitely, even though he was a, a Jew himself and proud of that, um, he did not insist on that. It was faith in Jesus Christ. So this letter to the Colossians, uh, 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 like many of the other things that, that were written by Paul or his uh, followers, disciples, um, really emphasis, emphasizes uh, uh, Jesus, the divinity of Jesus, following Jesus, and, and what that means for daily living. And so, um, you know, he talks about here about leading a life worthy of, 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 their, of your calling uh, to Jesus. So, uh, more about that in a moment. We're going to start, as we always do, though, with the service of responsive prayer, uh, the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and Martin Luther's morning prayer. Let us begin. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you've protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, as I say, our reading today is from the book of Colossians, the first chapter. Uh, verses 9 through 14 were what was assigned for today, but I chose to, to read the first eight verses as well. So we're going to read Colossians 1, 1 to 14. And if you want to think in terms of a theme as you're hearing it uh, and listening to me read it, you know, it's all about thanking God, thanking God for what God has done and what that means uh, in our lives. And again, we're not sure, it's doubtful that it was Paul, but it was written as if it was Paul writing. So it begins, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. 
You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And for this reason, since the day we heard it, we've not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the call, fully pleasing of the, of the Lord, rather, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He's rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So I want to first talk about just something that we think about all the time, but how critical it is, especially when we think back in terms of the early church. It's all about sharing this good news of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ and, and having a responsibility. So he gives thanks. The writer gives thanks to the Colossians for the fruits you know, that, that they're producing because of their faith. Uh, the story is told about Fritz Kreisler. Uh, he lived from 1875 to 1962, and he was a world-famous violinist, maybe arguably one of the greatest violinists of all time. And apparently he earned in his lifetime a fortune with the concerts that he did and compositions that he wrote, but he generously gave most of the money away. And so once when he discovered this exquisite violin on one of his trips, he didn't have enough money to buy it. Well, later on, having raised enough money to meet the asking price, he returned to the seller, hoping to purchase this beautiful instrument. But to his great dismay, it had been sold to a collector instead. Well, Chrysler made his way to the new owner's home and offered to buy the violin. But the collector refused to sell it. He said that it had become his prized possession and he would not sell it at any price. Well, keenly disappointed, Chrysler was about to leave when he had an idea. He said, could I play the instrument just once more before it's consigned to silence? Well, permission was granted and the great virtuoso filled the room with such heart-moving music that the collector's emotions were deeply stirred. I have no right to keep that to myself, he finally exclaimed. It's yours, Mr. Chrysler. Take it into the world and let people hear it. The point here is that as Christians, we have a symphony of beautiful news, good news uh, that we possess, good, the good news of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And there's a world of people still waiting to hear it. Um, and the point is, if we do not share this gospel with others, um, that we know that we come in contact with to hear that good news of God, how will they ever hear it? Shifting specifically to the reading this morning, um, as we heard, the writer um, begins this letter to the Christians in Colossae by telling them that when he prays for them, he always thanks God for them. Um, you know, why? because they're so smart or wise, reminiscent of Paul in, in Corinthians, saying, you know, not many were the, you were wise or strong or powerful. No, here the writer thanks God for the Colossians' faith and the love that is growing out of their hope in, and faith in Jesus Christ. And yet he doesn't just give thanks to God for these Christians. He never stops praying for them. So we heard in verse 9 um, that he asks God, to fill them with the knowledge of his will, um, suggesting that, you know, maybe there's still something lacking in their, in their faith. Well, that would probably be true for all of us. Uh, in spite of all the amazing things that they're doing, um, you know, there, there's still more that they can gain, more knowledge that they can have. Uh, as someone once wrote, you don't need to fill a gas tank that's already uh, full of gasoline. So obviously if there's something more that they need, the tank isn't quite full. So he's suggesting that they don't necessarily 
fully know God's will. They're faithful and loving, but they don't have complete wisdom and understanding. They still need more of that. And so this is something, though, that they can't do on their own. Uh, so he pr prays that they, God uh, would fill them uh, with the knowledge of God's will. And so he tells them that he's praying for them uh, with the knowledge of God's will as, the, as well as their spiritual wisdom and understanding. Um, but the point here is we don't need God to complete our knowledge of God and God's will so that we can win Bible trivia contests. We, we want God to expand our knowledge so that we can live more Christ-like lives. God wants us to, wants to use our knowledge of God to lead to right behavior. And so in verses 10 and 11, um, he writes about how the full knowledge of God will produce all sorts of fruit and calls upon them to live lives worthy of God, pleasing God in every good way, doing every good work, having great endurance and, and patience. Um, and then he kind of closes by basically suggesting that this complete spiritual wisdom for which he's praying that they might obtain um, primarily produces thanksgiving. You know, in other words, the more we learn about God and what God has done for us, the more we become thankful for every good thing that God gives us. Um, he most longs to see in the church gratitude to God uh, for the extraordinary things that God has done in Jesus Christ. He, he urges, he longs to see the sign, uh, signs of a uh, healthy Christian life um, that, again, is gratitude for God. Uh, to God for the great things that God uh, has done and continues to do in our lives. Um, Garrison Keillor, uh, of Prairie Home Companion fame, maybe used to listen to that on the radio. Uh, it used to be on Saturday nights. and uh, I, Throughout the year, I typically wouldn't listen to it, but when the family would be on vacation, we would always, and we'd be driving, typically somewhere on the next leg of our journey on a Saturday night, we'd listen to it. But Garrison Keillor uh, once said that we'd all be better off if we started every day by giving thanks to God for just one thing. Um, and yet how often uh, do we neglect to, uh, to do that? Even just one thing, how, how often do we um, have almost a sense of entitlement and, and we've lost the, the wonder and the awe of all the, that we've received, all the blessings that we have. Um, the television show Family Guy, that, that cartoon, the creator, Seth MacFarlane, I didn't know this, uh, he, had, he had booked a seat on 9-11, uh, on 20 years ago, uh, on American Airlines Flight 11 from Boston to Los Angeles. Uh, but because he had arrived late at the airport, he missed his flight, uh, a flight that the f hijackers later flew into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. And yet someone when someone asked him later if that made him think about the rest of his life as a gift, McFarland reportedly answered, well, that experience didn't change me at all. It made no difference in the way I live my life. It made no difference in the way I look at things. It was just a coincidence. As Christians, and through the lens of faith, you know, we don't look at things like that as a coincidence. And we give thanks for the blessings that we have, the the fact that, you know, another person might have looked at that as just a, 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 a being spared, um, you know, to to live the rest of their life. The rest of the life, life itself is a gift, but the rest of their life um, is is an extra gift um, that they that they now have. I remember my dad used to talk about being so thankful. Uh, for having survived uh, the Second World War. Um, you know, like a lot of young men, he probably didn't expect necessarily to make it through and prayed that he might and prayed that he would always be thankful if he did. Well, he did survive, and he was thankful, uh, you know, to, uh, to his dying day for that. Um, I had not experienced anything as dramatic as my dad did, but years ago I had uh, meningitis and encephalitis and wasn't sure where that was going to leave me um, and certainly have felt that every day since 
uh, again, life itself is a gift, but every day after a serious illness uh, is like a, a double gift, if you will. Um, and so Paul, uh, Paul or his, one of his disciples is, is writing about that, that thankfulness that we have uh, for what we've received from God and continue to receive from God. Well, let's close this morning with the prayer for the, or today, for the, with the prayer for the week. Dear God, give us faith to see in Jesus the bread of life that feeds us and cares for us now and always. Amen. Well, I'm sorry that this got out a little bit later. Uh, hopefully we won't have any technical difficulties tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.